Hello and welcome to Full String Beats. Before we officially start this video, I want to give you a bit of an overview because, well, while I was working on the intro to this video before I actually received the guitar you're about to see, um, well, I had expectations that um, I think I kind of might have over, had over expectations. That makes sense. Now, I ordered a expensive to me, um, Gibson SG standard in back because, well, I want to make a back in black style Angus edition guitar with a white pick card tuxedo. So, um, I ordered one from Zounds and, um, I planned on, well, kind of bragging the guitar up a little bit because, well, it's a Gibson, right? We all get excited when we get a Gibson. And, um, this guitar came, looks good right now, right? Looks pretty decent. Pretty nice guitar. I haven't did nothing to it yet. I literally just unboxed it, and you're going to see this unboxing. I'm going to put this down so you don't see too much of it. But during the unboxing, I'm going to be doing a comparison against, well, another guitar. And that is this one. And um, they're both very nice looking from a distance guitars, but one is better than the other. And, um, you might be surprised to find out which one is better, or you might not be. I don't know. But the point of this video is I, I'm not doing this video to knock either side of this coin. Just so you know, this is a um, this is a video that's just going to be truthful and honest all the way through. And I was very surprised at the end, some of the things that I discovered, and um, just wasn't expecting. Um, and. Maybe a little disappointed. I'm not going to tell you which one I'm disappointed in, but just uh, a little little disappointed. And um, just want to put it out there so you guys know exactly what you're getting into. And uh, for some, it might not make a difference, and I totally get it. No, uh, Gibson guitars sound phenomenal. I will tell you, this guitar plays phenomenal. I have played it, and it sounds phenomenal. And the other one sounds really good and plays phenomenal also. So... Keep that in mind as we go into this video. So just wanted to put that out there right now. I'm not trying to bash either one. I'm just trying to present facts. And if you're just a diehard and you love a certain brand and you can't accept the facts, this video might not be for you. So you might want to skip right by it and save yourself some loss and sleep at night. But if you really want to know some facts and, and things that I point out that I just noticed is, you know, as I do these videos, I try to do them um, unscripted unplanned, dive right into it, do it so you guys are seeing exactly what I'm seeing as I'm seeing it. So that way there's no confusion. And if I leave out anything, I apologize. And if I ramble too much, I apologize, but I'm going to keep it real. So here we go. Let's get to that video. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit that like button, share, subscribe. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. We have the Gibson. It has arrived. Box is a little... Dented on the side. I don't think anything's wrong inside, but box is a little dented on the side. We're going to open this up. This should be a Gibson SG standard in black. Now, before we start, I'm hoping that the case is not black because you never know what you're going to get for cases for these things. They come in a soft case now. Um, I guess they're trying to cut costs anywhere they can these days, but uh, a soft case, it looks like they, they're supposed to be a nice case, but there's three different cases. There is like a cream color, there is a, a brownish color, and then there is the black. And Man, black is so boring, but I'm going to guess it's in black because it's a black guitar, but we'll have to see. Let's uh, let's get into this here. And they do have security tape on it. I'll show you. There's security tape on it, although it's very, very loose. I don't know. What's in there? Yeah. Yeah, it's very loose, so hold that off. I don't know if somebody's been in there or not. Maybe it's been checked. I don't know. But uh, let's get into this guitar. Kind of excited. Um, very expensive guitar. Very expensive uh, purchase. And uh, how are we boxed up here? Let's take a look inside here. And here's how our uh, comes boxed. A little protective cardboard here. That is going over there. Yeah, black case, as I suspected. Some padding here. And this did come in another box also that was bigger. Um, and this was in that box. But the case is pretty nice. 
really, really nice. Looks like actual leather. And it's probably not, but it does look like it. Let's get that uh, box out the way. And what do we have here? T uh, woven in tough zipper by YKK. And um, anything else on this? Nope, that's just, they're, they're proud of their zipper apparently. Okay. Um, let's do this before, turn this around here so you guys can see this case. Isn't that nice? It's a nice case. I wish it was either the brown or the cream, but it's still, it, I, I'm, oh, this has uh, like reinforced edges on it. This is almost like a, almost like a soft hard case. Very, very nice reinforced edges. I don't think they used to have these when they came out, but I could be wrong. Yeah, super nice. I'm happy with the case. Nice, nice Gibson logo on it. Well done. It's embroidered, if you're wondering. It's not like a decal or, or an iron-on patch or anything like that. It is a uh, embroidered case. Let's uh, look in the zipper here. We should have some case candy in here, I'm hoping. What do we have? Well, we have a Gibson nylon strap. Now, I'm going to tell you something about this strap right now. This is... So, okay, they put a strap in. This is kind of, um, in my opinion, a waste because this is actually cheaper than the cheapest straps that come with our budget guitars. Um, it is actually of a lot less quality than most of those. Um, so keep that in mind. It says Gibson on it. I, it's kind of embarrassing that they would put their name on this. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, that's not impressive. So leave it out because it's kind of, in my my eyes anyhow if you putting something like this in a case um you're best off leaving it out because i have case, i have uh, straps over here from budget that come with budget guitars that are actually very good this is really really light really really bad okay so i'll put that to the side not knocking the guitar not knocking gibson just pointing it out um then we have an inspected by and our serial number or model number and our serial number inspected by and there's a little squiggle mark there and um gibson we sweat the details now i'm going to ask you guys a question especially for your gibson connoisseurs why is it why is this um i don't understand the chinese markings on these so i don't i don't get this is the same stuff that comes with uh I've seen these with knockoffs and they check the boxes and let's see what's checked off here before we get into the guitar top back checked neck checked fretboard checked so everything is checked um pit guard if applicable pit guard is not checked but it should have a pit guard so that's odd uh, so let's get into this and i'm just pointing out everything here is its birth picture um and this is sitting in front of a keyboard and this should be the picture of this guitar, which would be cool. I wish they would sign the back of these pictures. That would be cool, Gibson, if you're watching. Sign the back of your pictures, at least put a squiggle mark on there so we know they're authentic. That would be cool because, you know, we can all take pictures. But it's pretty cool that you have it. And because, um, honestly, how do I know that this is this guitar? I don't know that. Um, but, but it's still cool to have. So we'll sit that right over here. And what else we got? So we have this here what do we got in here we have our gibson gold warranty for our records of course we've seen those before but what else do we have we have a nice microfiber gibson cloth now this is nice this is a very nice microfiber gibson cleaning cloth i like that i like that touch that is nice and we have our gibson owner's manual um, pretty cool. And this we should have our truss rod adjuster here. Yes, and there is our famous truss rod adjustment tool here. Not an Allen key, guys, because it's for Gibson, but uh, naturally for the truss rod. No. Okay, so I'm gonna put this stuff all back in the bag, and I'll probably never touch it again. Get that in there. Okay. Now what we've all been waiting for the uh, Gibson. Let's see. I really like this case. This is a nice case. Very nice. I like it. Oh, okay. So here we go. Um, 
Not very clean. Um, but that's why I've got a microfiber rag, I guess. I like this little touch that they do right here. I'm going to show you. It has a little strap here to hold the guitar, and the fretboard is extremely, extremely dry. Extremely dry. And uh, I'll do that. Let's take this guitar out. Here we are. We're going to set this case to the side. Let me uh, set this over here. And let's get this out here. And let's check this guitar out. So let me show it to you here first here. You guys get a good look. And there we are. So it should be a brand new Gibson SG Standard. There's a reason that I got it in black. Because in the future, we're going to turn this into an AC-DC back in black era guitar that Angus had. And we're going to put a white pick guard on it and do a, little, a few little different things to it and make it really cool. Um, what I do notice right away is it's got, you know, of course, the nibbed frets. Fretboard's dry. Um, they all are. Honestly, I've never, I've had one guitar come and that was recently that wasn't dry and I think they just set that up before they sent it and that was actually a Chibson, which we're going to compare it to because we have a Angus Young Edition Chibson back here. We're going to do a comparison. Um, we have aluminum bridge, uh, aluminum tailpiece and uh, a really nice pit guard and it is a one, two, three, it's a five ply pit guard. It does have the plastic over it. Um, now I'm looking for we're looking for blemishes right now, and I'm gonna I my eyes are drawn to them right away being black, so there is some obvious blemishes on this SG, which is not very impressive for a Gibson. You don't want to you know two thousand dollar guitar almost to have blemishes right out of the box, but um, this is a nitro finish. At least that's what they say. It does appear to be nitro. Um, yeah, it does appear to be a nitro finish. Um, Got a scratch in the headstock. You guys are not going to be able to see it, but there's a scratch in the headstock up here. We have multiple blemishes in this area and where the, uh, I'm going to leave pictures to this, oh, horrible blemishes where the body meets the neck. We have paint blemishes, scratches, and flaws, and where they overbuffed on some of it right there, right away. And on both sides, it is the same. Oh. Yeah, we got compound in there. Let me take pictures of this stuff and get up to. We got compound in here. We have multiple finish flaws on this guitar. Um, definitely not a first rate guitar for paying full price. I have to point out the way it is because I'm drawn right to it, especially being black. And this is a you'd expect this quality control would have seen this because I'm drawn right to it. I'm not nitpicking. I'm drawn to it. Um, pit guard is cut. Honestly, the pit guard's not cut sharp. It's not cut right. Um, so, but it's a Gibson. This is the real deal. So, but we're not, I'm not trying to nitpick. I'm trying to just point out what is wrong. We're going to look the nut ends here. Are cut horribly. They're rough. They're jagged. They're just, they're, yeah, that's uh that's a, supposed to be a uh, graph tech nut. And, um, but it's not cut very. There's tooling marks on it and everything else. And it, th honestly, this, this appears to be a bone nut to me. But it's, it should be a graph tech. It appears to be bone, but not cut right. So stuff I'm seeing right out of the box, I've got to be 100% honest with you. Do I like the guitar? I still like the guitar. Um, I, with some buffing and some work, I can get rid of this stuff so far. Um, some sandpaper on the nut. I can get rid of this stuff. I can take out that scratch. But I shouldn't have to for a, you know... $1,800, $1,900 price tag. Um, shouldn't have to do that. But let's flip it over. I haven't looked at the back yet. Let's flip it over and check it out. We have the uh, Grover Rotomatic Tuners. Here we are. Rotomatics. Okay. And uh, they're on there straight, at least. And we have gobs of compound in the serial number and in made in the USA. Look at this. Not what you would expect from a Gibson. This this looks rushed. You see all the compound in there? That should be all black. That's all compound that's in there. And look at the back here. Yeah. I'm, oh. 
Yeah, we have like we have multiple finish problems in the back here. But like I don't know if you can see it on the camera. We got multiple fingerprints on it too. Multiple finish pro oh. Okay. So now I'm starting to get a little irritated because I am drawn right to this stuff. We have a extreme lacquer run where the neck meets the body and then outright over buffing where they use the high speed buffer where they overdid it right here and actually burnt the lacquer on the heel right here. We have multiple finish scratches. I mean, you're going to get scratches on the guitar. I can deal with that. But the over buff, and this, this is, I, I, but I'm seeing it right away. Let me get you right in here. That's, that's, a, that's what he burnt through on the lacquer with the buffing wheel. Okay. And then we have a nice big sag. You can feel it with your fingers right here, drawn right to it. Um, back of the headstock, like I said, compound neck looks fantastic. The neck looks great. And we have a lot of finish issues, guys. A lot of finish issues. Let's see this here. What was it? A lot of finish issues with this guitar. I mean, not one or two, but there's, there's this gobs of it. Now, it's a black guitar. You're going to see things, but I want to... I wasn't going to do this till later on, but we're going to do a comparison. I know it's going to sound good because it's a Gibson and they do, they sound good. Um, let's look at the, look at our frets. They're nibbed properly. Of course, there's no sprout on this. Appears to be set up. I'm going to check to see if there's any neck relief. Something tells me that the setup probably is proper, but whoever was responsible for finish at Gibson, I'm just gonna tell them right now that you, know, you suck. Whoever did this sucks. They get better stop drinking. We have the proper amount of neck relief, so that is good about the proper amount of neck relief. I'm gonna guess the action on this to be about 1.25 to 1.5. It's set up, so it's even in tune or close to it. So that's it's been gone through there. So whoever did the setup job did a great job. Um, action's not super slammed, but it's about right for the style of guitar it is. Let's see here. Yeah, one point. We're at one point five. Um, my Gibson came in at one millimeter with no buzz, which is really cool. I did raise it to one point two five um, because I. I vary my gauges of strings from nines to tens, and that's the only reason I did that. Um, got two kind of gritty knobs. This one's really gritty. This one's a little bit. These ones aren't. Okay, so there's where we're at so far. But what do you think? It's still a pretty nice guitar, but I'm just not expecting the flaws. It looks like a guitar that is used... It looks like a guitar that um, that somebody, yeah. We, I mean, we, got, we do. We have we have uh, finished problems on the edge of the face of the headstock here. There's, yeah, there's there's this is not something that I would expect from Gibson. Um, I, I'm going to be 100% transparent right now as far as body and fit. Uh, let's say body and finish. My chips and SG blows this out of the water. It's a chips in, but there was more care in the QC for sure. I'm not saying the electronics are better in it. I'm not saying the tuners are better or nothing like that. I'm saying that the body, I'm going to go as far as to say is even the fretboard, um, is better. Um, and these are definitely a nickel silver fret. Definitely not stainless steel. I have stainless steel on the other ones. Um, and you just got to call it the way you see it. But it is still is a beautiful guitar and is a Gibson. So... I don't want you to hold it. I'm nitpicking. I'm not nitpicking. This guitar, this stuff is standing right. Like when you look at it, it stands right out. And what you're really getting me is how dirty the guitar is out of the box. And how the, the lack of care, I don't know if you can see it, but the lack of care where they, where they buffed it. I mean, I know buffing black is difficult. But burning it, and these are burn spots, or what they were. They they went too hard on the wheel. I don't know if they're teaching somebody maybe how to do it, and I happen to get one of those. But um, it is what it is. Now, will I be sending this guitar back? Definitely not. I'm not. 
I'm not like that. I'm not going to send it back. It's still a Gibson. It's it's cool, um, and it is what it is, and it's still worth what it's worth. Um, and it's but it's just worth noting that if you're buying one expecting it pristine, that well, it might not happen. So let's do this here. I'm going to set this one. Let's keep this one in the neck brace. And I wasn't going to do this comparison right away. We're going to do a sound test comparison later on, but. Um, let's let's do this comparison so what i'm going to bring out here guys is my chips and sg okay and here this is a chipson this is not a real gibson so a lot of people would say to this that headstock's not even close well actually this headstock is identical to the one that is on the gibson the tuners are not but the headstock itself is the exact same shape um the body on the chipson is much heavier um, they're both mahogany, but it's much heavier. Now, a lot of that is due to the fact that Gibson uses aluminum tailpiece and bridge, and I believe they're, this is steel, and I have upgraded uh, this bridge on this one, and that is definitely a steel bridge. I've upgraded that. So, um, keep that in mind. Now, this guitar has been slightly upgraded. I've changed the, um, I have changed the, uh, I put witch hat, hat knobs on it. I've changed the uh, poker chip and this and, and the bridge, of course. Tuners are bone stock, um, but if you look at the back, the serial numbers, and when you turn them over, they're actually not that far off. Now, I will tell you, this guitar has no finish issues. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautifully done guitar. I, am, I just, I can't get over it. Now, this is a one-piece body. If you're seeing this line right here, and it looks like it's a two-piece, it's not. That is just the wood grain. This is a one-piece body, one-piece neck. We have the Looks like an identical, so very close to it, yes, uh, rake to the neck. The, like I said, the headstock, I'm going to show you pictures of these later on, guys. The headstocks are nice. Your Gibson logo on this is a much deeper mother of pearl than the uh, fake, but still done very, very well. Um, the Gibson logo is done very well. There is a small difference in the logo in the center, but uh, still done very, very well. As far as shape goes, it's it's dead on. Um, truss rod cover. There. This is obviously a Gibson truss rod cover. This one is not. This is a better quality truss rod cover. You can see the difference in the ply, although they both shape the same and they both come to the exact same spot on the nut, which is cool. Like again, like I said, stainless steel frets on this, beautiful fret job. They are not nibbed, but they do have the lightning bolt inlays, and this is an ebony fretboard uh, versus rosewood fretboard. So we're just going over the differences. I'm not doing this to show which one's better, which one's worse. You can make your own opinions, you know, um, make your own judgment on that. Um, but for all intents and purposes, from here to here, the only difference is, is deeper, much better quality mother of pearl on the Gibson. Um, we're going down through. Um, this, I believe, is a plastic nut, although, yeah, this is definitely a plastic nut, although it could be a graph tech nut. Um, this one, this is this appears to be bone to me. I've never seen a graph tech nut with uh, tooling marks on it like this. So definitely appears, and I don't have a problem with bone. I actually would prefer bone, which is cool. Inlays on this guitar. Well, they're not done the greatest. There's fill. I'm going to show you pictures. There's a lot of fill, a lot of gaps. Definitely, especially on this one. Um, definitely not done the greatest. Inlays on the Chibson are exquisite. The lightning bolts are done exquisitely. There is no fill, there is no marks, there is no nothing. Now again, I'm not doing this to put down Gibson, I'm just doing this to show the differences between the two. Um, and we'll get close-ups of all these, so make sure you pay attention. Okay, fret jobs on both of them. Let me run my hands down through. I've done nothing to the frets on this other than give them a quick polish, which I will do with the Gibson. The frets on the Chinese guitar are better. They're about the same up until about right here. Right here in this area. These ones are uniformly smooth all the way down through, and these get a little little rougher as we go up through and that could be the process of the nibbing the uh, fret edge itself the binding horrible on this here i don't know if you can see it or not when we get up into the binding here 
and it's just not that great. It's not that smooth. It's not that even. It has some discoloration to it, and I actually have some uh, some of the binding is actually looks like it's chipping off there. Um, on this one, the binding is very nice. The only bad spot on this guitar is up in here. There's a little piece that looks like it's kind of like divoted in on the other end. Other than that, where the paint meets the body, and I, I, I'm going to tell you this guitar right here also appears to be a nitro finish it could be poly but in appearance when you get to the side and you look at the depth and the way it runs it appears to be nitro i can't say that for sure so it, we're just going to call it poly but it meets the neck nicely on each side and there is no finish flaws there but there is with the gibson okay knob placement of course they're a little different um this one is over Uh, let's check our switch here. Let's see exactly. We're going to mic this so we can actually just tell all these differences. We're going we're to do this in millimeters, guys. And we're going to say, let me find a point here. We can go, well, let's go straight out. Let's go straight out. Then we know. So in millimeters, the poker from the poker chip to the edge of the guitar in kind of a straight line here. We are at 23.7 where this one, much, much more, would be at 36.3. So there's our difference between the, the two in millimeters. Now we got our switches, and these are different size switches, but these are a, a top hat, these are a witch hat, so there's a big difference. These are a little bit bigger in width, I believe. Let's see here, 28.9 in 25.7 so there's a difference but so but you can see there's just a slight variation in placement now if we go center to center between the knobs and this will help us know if we can put well, looking about about center to center is about 44 millimeters 44 millimeters so our placement center to center here and here and here and here is the same, the exact same. Now let's go center to center here, or approximate it at least. This one's 39.5. This one is not. This one is not 39.5. This one is 38.2. So there's a variation there. And then we're gonna go. We're at about 40. Good right here. Get dead center 45.2 and 45.2. So the alignment, although a touch different, the alignment on these ones are more symmetrical than the ones on the Gibson. And of course, you know, our bridge posts and all that, we know they're going to be the same because bridge pickups should be pretty much the same 69.6, 69.6, 69.6. Thirty-eight point five, thirty-eight point five, thirty-eight point five. So yeah, for all intents and purposes, that is the same. Um, the pit guard itself looks like we have a variation in pit guard size. This is where it's going to change up on you quite a bit. This the pit guards shape is very close. Actually, the only part two parts that I see that are different on these two pit guards other than the plies are where this jets out, it jets out a little sharp to a sharper point over here versus this one. And this sharp jets up to a sharper point here versus this one, although this is very cut very well. It does have four screws on this one. I have done that though, but it's not symmetrical because well, the way they put the screws in wasn't quite right. So I had to roll with what I had to work with. I was going to attempt to change this pit guard and actually take this pit guard, put it on this guitar, but I see I'm going to have to uh, do a little bit of modification because to the pickup, unless the routing cavities are, would allow me for, for, for some uh, leeway, um, we're at 20.5 and this one's 15.5 millimeters. So. If I can drop this pickup down a little bit in the cavity, which I may be able to because this is routed out dual. It's not a swimming pool, but it's routed out dual. I might have a little room. And if not, I can get in there and route out even a little bit and make it work. So 
not an issue there. So we'll take this pick guard's gonna go in here because this one's getting the white pick guard for uh, like an ACDC type back and black guitar. So there we are there, switch. Very rattly switch. Very positive, you can hear the difference in this. The switch and the Chinese guitar actually feels better to the touch. Is it better? I don't know, it feels better. Um, no greediness on these pots, but these are cheap CF pots, definitely gonna be better pots in the Gibson. Which guitar do I like better? Well, I gotta tell you, I gotta like, I'm gonna have to like the Gibson better because it's a Gibson and it's gonna have, you know, it's, 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 it definitely is authentic. But um, which one would I, you know, I mean, there's there's differences. The, these pick, this pickup's not level under the strings where the poles are. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. You see that pickup is at an angle. Yeah. Both of them, actually. So they're both angled. So um, the poles, the pickup height is not a proper pickup height adjustment where the pickup on the Gibson is almost perfectly level. So on each one, or the uh, Chibson, I should say, is almost perfectly level. But yeah, I'm, I like them both. Um, I'm not going to lie. The fit and finish on the Chibson is better with exception of a few things of, such as the, you know, the pick guard and the plies. This is like a... It might even be a two-ply. No, it's a three-ply pit guard on the Gibson. Okay, let's turn them over and check out the back. Now, this might have some smudges on it, but this is an outstanding-looking guitar on the back. I'm not going to This guitar on the back is actually pretty amazing. Um, let me show this to you here. And once again, zero finish flaws on this guitar and I mean zero this thing is as close to perfection as you can get I've never seen a Chinese guitar this perfect and I've seen a lot of good Chinese guitars my second best being the uh, the uh, Chipson Les Paul Ace Fraley guitar very nice guitar uh, one of the few guitars that I will never do anything to because it's that good so we'll flip this one over and we can take this away flip this over and here we go. So then we're going to look at differences in the back. And there's obvious differences right away. But keep in mind, this is emulating 2006 to 2009 era guitar here. There is different variations of these guitars. Next, this is a touch fatter, more like a uh, 61. This neck is, 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 is a touch thinner. Um, like I said, tuners, the font up here on the... Are different. The font up here is different for the serial number. This is much bigger than this one. Although I'm going to say that the serial number on the back of the Chibson does look better. And I did, and that was more of a brighter color. I did fill it in with a little stain to make it look kind of more deeper, but it does look better, uh, more uniform. But it's not a Gibson. Gibson doesn't do it that way. So. And then there's this one with the uh, with the compound in it and not filled in uniform. Let me get you there. So disc differences. Um, weight, we'll get to that in a second. We have a difference in the way the neck is built. This is, has a much lower lip here than this one. Um, this is a very comfortable guitar to play. I don't know about this one. I haven't played it yet. But uh, let's get some... I'm going to dwell it on this back. Let's measure here at about the nut from behind. 43.6 and 43.6. So we're the same here. We're going to go up. Let's turn them over and do this, though, because we want to do this properly. Let's see what this taper goes up to here. And let's just, let's measure it at the first fret now. Forty-four point two. Forty-four point two. We'll go up here. Last fret. Fifty-seven point three. And fifty-seven point three. So they're they're dead on, dead on, as far as that goes. Now let's measure it at the twelfth. Let's see if there's any difference in variation at the twelfth. 
53 on the nose. 53 on the nose. So identical there. Um, thickness, we'll have to do that with the strings off. because So this little differences. Now, body shape. Body shape is very, 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 very close. I mean, scary close. Um, I'm trying to get some pictures up. This guitar here, now this is based more off a 61 body that they put on this guitar. I uh, don't know why, and the reason I know that is because I had one. Um, and it's thicker, where this one tapers in more here. But this does have proper tapers on it. This is this is definitely a more streamlined guitar on the side. Um, if we want an overall thickness... We're at uh, about 3.2 millimeters. Okay, keep that in mind, about 3.2. And on this one, overall thickness. I'm sorry. Yeah, 3.2 versus like 9.6, so much thicker. Actually, 9.4, my bad. 9.4 thickness, in the, about the thickest spot of this guitar, 9.4. So. Um, big difference in, in, in thickness, but body shapes themselves, honestly, the cutouts for the horns here, um, they, this is very recent, reminiscent of an, of an older SG. Um, I, honestly, this is more streamlined of an SG than, than uh, I've ever had, personally. I like it. It looks great. Um, dimensions? Man, they, they're identical in dimensions. Body shape? The body shape dimensions are virtually the same. So, I mean, for all intents and purposes, very cool. Very close. Um, very cool. So, price differences between the two. I mean, you're looking at 17, 1800 bucks plus tax for this one. And you're looking at about 300 for this one. Um, electronics in this, you know, cheap CF Chinese electronics. Is it worth upgrading this guitar to good electronics? Yes, but here's the catcher this guitar sounds fantastic i'm sure this one sounds over the top fantastic i'm sure it's going to play great it's set, definitely set up um this one is was definitely set up also running your fingers down this fretboard and this one they mean they both feel great i can tell you that this one plays amazing i'm sure this is going to play amazing so we're going to have to get into that you guys hit that like button share subscribe we'll move on to the next video here shortly we're going to play both of these guitars and um really see you know um what they sound like and uh, we'll try to hit some acbc songs and then also make sure you hit the like button share subscribe hit the notification bell because we're going to be upgrading this guitar to the uh, acbc back in black style guitar and i got some special touches that will be going on this also and I'll, I'll fix those little buff marks and uh luckily i know how to run a high speed buffer um so we will uh, fix those, make this as pretty as we can, and play the hell out of it. Remember, it's rock and roll that makes the world do that thing, and it ain't noise pollution. Thanks for watching Full Street Beats, guys. Peace. Bye. Okay, so now I've had a little bit of time to reflect on this. and I know this is a lengthy video, but I think this is an important things to take note of. Number one, I have a budget guitar channel. I'm used to a lot of budget guitars. While I have had some high-end guitars through here, most of them, to be honest, have been budget guitars. And I find the best of the best of the budget guitars. And I think they get a bum rap. I think they're fantastic guitars. And not just for the money. Apparently, for any money. Now, when we go above a certain price point, in my opinion, buying guitars when we go above that $500 price point. And let me let me touch on that first. Purchased an Epiphone Maestro Vibrola SG. And that was an outstanding guitar and it was around 600 bucks. Outstanding. Outstanding fit, finish, sound, playability, amazing. But then we step up the game and we go to a Gibson, a Gibson SG standard. And the comparison between those two guitars is night and day. 
it's like looking at an old budget guitar, which would be the Gibson versus the Epiphone, which is so much better in build quality. We had a one-piece body. We had outstanding frets of a Brola, a finish to die for, tuning stability that's even better than a Gibson with a Vibrola, and um, just an amazing outright guitar. Now, you wouldn't expect that, but yet that's what it is. That is that's exactly what it was. Now, are all SGs like this? Man, I want to think I got a bad one. For me, was the purchase worth it? Well, it was worth it for the learning experience. The hands-on to see what exactly it's like. Now, you know, people say you got to find the right one. Listen, I think it plays fantastic. Sounds fantastic. There's no doubt about it. And I'm going to keep the guitar. Because, well, all guitars need a little help, a little work. We've all known that. This one just needs a little more than most. At least it's not in the electronics and the pickups, so that's good. Tuning stability is fantastic. Um, it's the it's the appearance, and let's face it, we all judge things on initial appearances. And um, I guess a lot of Gibson owners, and I'm not not going to judge it on the name, but I really don't think Gibson's what they used to be. I don't even think they're close. And their sub brands have gotten bad from what's came through here, such as Kramer, um, also, and that's too bad too because I was a big Kramer lover. And now, well, I got a bad taste in my mouth. Now, to be fair, when I did the Kramer review, I did have um, a representative from Gibson get a hold of me and assure me that they're looking into the quality control issues and they're on top of it. Now, is that true? I don't know. But they may be. But Gibson, if you're watching again, I'm not knocking your brand. But as if you're looking for new players to come play your brand, this is definitely not the way to do it. Because we can get budget guitars that cost three to five hundred dollars that are simply better. And I know that's gonna leave that's gonna make some people right now so angry, but that is a fact because I do this every day. I see them every day. And I know that every guitar on my wall back here is better in fit and finish. And even a couple in sound, but that's subjective. But in fit and fit and finish is better than this brand new Gibson standard. And that is a shame. So, I think it can be corrected. I definitely think it can be corrected. Um, but there's little things, there's little common sense things that need to be done to correct it. Uh, the big one is to get an inspector that actually knows what they're doing. A QC inspector, in my opinion, is the most important job for any manufacturing process the final say they put their mark on it and if you're not paying attention to who's putting that mark on it and when they're putting out bad stuff if they let one slip by that's the one that you need to be found out about right but how many have slipped by that you haven't known about that somebody didn't complain about and if they're doing one they're doing many because it's not a hard job to visually inspect anything your eyes should be trained to do it hell my eyes are drawn right to it as soon as i unboxed it and uh, sometimes I really have to nitpick a guitar to find a flaw. Sometimes when I'm reviewing a budget guitar and I find a flaw in that budget guitar, I feel like I'm nitpicking. But now, really, I don't feel like, like now I look at it and go, I shouldn't even mention it because the flaws in most of the guitars that come through here are nothing compared to the flaws, the finished flaws that are on this Gibson. And this is the second Gibson product that has been that way in a row. And that's unacceptable. And little things. Yeah, it's nice that you include a picture of the guitar, but I honestly don't know if this is my guitar. This could be any guitar. It doesn't show this guitar or the back of the headstock and the serial number. It doesn't show it. I don't know this. This could just be a random picture that you put in a box of any guitar. I can't tell. There's no way I can tell. So if you had a picture of this and then one of the back of the headstock, the back of the guitar, then we would know. And these pictures should have the person who took them, that inspected them, maybe their signature on them too. Just a thought, because that would really help out your quality control standards. And I'm saying this as a constructive criticism, because I don't like things to fail. I like them to succeed. I want American businesses to succeed, but I am not 
um, discriminating against any guitar or guitar manufacturer. I think they all can rock, and I think they all can learn from each other. So that's my two cents. But on the good side, it does sound amazing. It's got amazing electronics, and it comes with a really nice case. But another thing, it would be really nice if you guys would let us know what case it's coming with. Let us know the color. There's nothing about the color of the case that it comes with. And let us know if it's going to be a one-piece body or a two-piece body. Because you know what? They're not all two-piece bodies. Some are one-piece bodies. This one's definitely a two-piece body because I can see the seam through the finish. And that's also a shame. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace. Bye.